Hello everyone, today we will talk about a very important risk measurement matrix called expected shortfall, which in recent times is made mandatory by Basel Committee to calculate capital requirements. This is the sequence in which we will be covering expected shortfall concepts. Starting with value at risk as expected shortfall can be said to be an extension of VAR. If you want to understand VAR in detail, then you can refer to our detailed videos on VAR. Next, we will look at expected shortfall theoretically, and then we will together create an Excel model to calculate expected shortfall. This will be followed by some practical considerations while implementing expected shortfall models and ending with some practical applications of expected shortfall methodology. In a nutshell, we can say value at risk tells you how much money you can lose over a given time period and for a given level of confidence. If we see in diagram value at risk for example, it gives us information that in 95% of cases your portfolio will not suffer a loss of more than 0.82%. Suppose you are a hedge fund manager running a $10 million portfolio and someone comes to you and says that in 95% of cases, your portfolio will not suffer a loss of more than 0.82%. Your immediate next question will be what will happen in those remaining 5% cases? Unfortunately, this important question cannot be answered by value at risk. But fortunately, this can be answered by concept of expected shortfall, which is also known as conditional value at risk or simply CVAR. Expected shortfall is the average loss exceeding the value at risk. For example, in this diagram, expected shortfall takes the average of all the returns in the red portion. Let's look at this with an example. So let's say we have the one-year returns distribution from two different portfolios. And again, we're going to look at that 95th percentile confidence level the expected shortfall would actually be the average of everything here. So, if we took an average of all these observations, that would be our expected shortfall. Who knows? I'm going to make up a number and let's just say the expected shortfall is equal to negative 8%. The second distribution is essentially the same. We just modify its tail so that we still only have 5 percentile out in this tail this cuts off rather abruptly, then this kind of has a lump out here. The VAR doesn't change because this is still the 5th percentile cutoff. But now, the expected shortfall actually is taking an average of all of these numbers. Right? And so now, instead of the expected shortfall sitting at negative 8%, we might find that our expected shortfall is now like negative 15%. So expected shortfall is addressing the limitations that value at risk has by capturing the severity of the losses in the tail of the distribution. Now let's move into the Excel model for expected shortfall. Here I have downloaded last three years of daily closing of Nifty Index of India, which is one of the most important indexes in emerging markets. Let's paste it on a new sheet so that we can create this model together. Now I'm going to use the natural log method to calculate the daily returns. So we take one day's price divided by the previous day's stock price and hit enter. Now I can double click and this will populate all the values for return. As per the parametric method for calculating value at risk, it is going to be equal to the mean plus the z-score at that confidence level multiplied by the standard deviation. Let's look at the mean for the daily returns first which is going to be equal to the average. So the average daily return for the last three years was 0.04%. Now we need the standard deviation of the daily returns, which is going to be equal to standard dev.p. So we can do dot .population or dot .sample. I'm going to use dot .p because I have an extremely large sample. And when the sample is extremely large, then dot p is approximately same as dot s, which we can see here. Now, the z-score for the confidence interval is norm sinv. 
and probability is going to be 1 minus this confidence interval. Now, VAR can be calculated using above formula, that is, mean plus z-score multiplied by standard deviation. Now, let's freeze the mean and standard deviation in formula by selecting it and pressing F4, and now copy it down. Our expected shortfall is going to be the average of everything to the left of this VAR value. Now, how would we go about calculating that? Well, there's a handy formula in Excel called equals average, if where we can grab a range that will use our daily returns. Our criteria is that we're going to find everything that is less than or equal to this VAR value, and then the value at risk value for that specific confidence interval. And then our average range is going to be the daily returns once again, and hit enter. And so I can drag this all the way down. And then we'll find our expected shortfall for every single confidence interval. Now let's try to interpret these numbers. Let's say you have a portfolio of $1 million with 99% VAR. You know that maximum loss in 99% of cases will not exceed 1.9% or simply $190,000. But in extreme cases, you might see losses up to 2.76%, which means you need to keep a buffer of $276,000. Now you can keep this money aside as cash with you for extreme market situations and not earn anything on it. Or you can maximize returns by investing $190,000 in very safe and liquid instruments like USA Short Term 90 Days Treasury and the remaining $86,000 you can invest in long-dated government bonds which are also safe and liquid but will give you higher return. Alright, let's get back to our remaining topics. Next, we look at practical considerations while implementing ES models. Probably most important of all is data quality. By now, you would be able to appreciate that incorrect sample size or outliers in the data set can distort the expected shortfall calculations. Moving on to last topic which is practical applications of expected shortfall. As we have already seen in our example that it is used in risk management of large portfolios run by mutual funds, hedge funds, etc. Along with that, the Basel Accords incorporate expected shortfall as a key measure for setting capital requirements, ensuring banks maintain sufficient capital buffers to withstand financial shocks and protect against systemic risks. Alright everyone, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it, please do like, share and subscribe for more such videos.